All right, welcome back to the channel, everybody. Uh, there is a, there are currently two wings, two main wings of the Labour Party. One is the radical left, the the old school hard left, the Corbyn types, and you've got the establishment Labour, who've changed their branding so many times. You have New Labour, Blairism, now you have Starmerism, whatever that is. It's basically the the, the globe the globalist big government pro establishment. Labourites who are essentially against the working classes that are against their own party agenda that was created. Now this <laughs> debate happened on Robert Peston's show on ITV. Yeah, I know it's going to be difficult to watch this, but I'm going to watch it with you and I'm going to react to a bit of a clash between Jeremy Corbyn and Liz Kendall. You remember Liz Kendall? Yeah, she's another beauty. Anyway, let's go to this video and see what they had to say. No, and I'm afraid Jeremy only has himself to blame for the situation he's in because of his failure to apologise for what happened in the Labour Party when he was leader on anti-Semitism. Yep. Um, you know, and we were speaking earlier about what happened <clears throat> at the last election. The truth is, it was a catastrophic defeat But what, what, the Labour what, what, Party. what apology, because maybe you'll do it now, what, what <laughs> apology would you want from A Jeremy? full and frank apology, which has never happened. But let me just say this... But you accept that you haven't made a full and frank apology? OK, before we hear from Jeremy. So, I do not like Liz Kendall's wing of the, the Labour Party, but I definitely don't like people like Corbyn either. He has never actually apologised, and it's not really about... When it comes to apology, because people on the left are obsessed with apologies. We're not obsessed with apologies. We actually, what we want is acknowledgement, improvement, get better in life, generally speaking. And what we want from the left, instead of an apology, is just to go away. <laughs> but it's not going to happen. But in the interest of sanity, and from the perspective of the moderate Labour people, like Liz Kendall, let's see if Jeremy Corbyn could actually apologise. <laughs> let's see. I have explained many times and apologised many times for the situation that happened in the Do party. It. But you'll also know, Liz, that I appointed Shami Chakrabarti to undertake an investigation <laughs> into this and produce a report. And oh, really? I accepted the um, Equalities and Human mm. Rights Commission report and the Ford inquiry indicated that everything I had said <laughs> was about true. the scale, evil as anti-Semitism is, oh. the scale of it within the party was grossly exaggerated. Oh, oh dear Jeremy Corbyn. So, <laughs> exaggerated. Even to this day, he, by the way, this, this, this whole Corbynism scandal and everything else wasn't just about Jewish people. And it's just one topic. So when people use the word, the A word, it's not necessarily just to focus on that group. It went hand in hand with everything, with intimidation, with harassing the idiots and all the other members and everything else that happened, blackmailing and everything. It went hand in hand with the toxic culture of Marxists inside the Labour Party. Now they've been replaced by another group, the globalist commies. They're the same thing, they just have a different route to go towards the same direction. But yeah, he's, he's still not apologising. <laughs> We are a party I mean, of anti-racism, right? I'm afraid right. you and I equally are. Then. And I am proud that Keir Starmer has taken firm action on this issue since he became leader of the Labour Party and that he has changed the Labour Party <laughs> since Jeremy Corbyn was leader. That he said that we love our country, that we're proud of our armed forces and we stand up for NATO. <laughs> he has changed our party in saying we will root out anti-Semitism mm -hmm. and people who think that the problem was exaggerated are actually part of the problem yep. themselves. There's been a big change in the, the Labour instance. Party now, and I think that's where, you know, Jeremy had his chance, <coughs> that didn't work. It's Keir Starmer who's going to lead us into the next election with a changed Labour Party, and that is really important. But you must have, I mean, Je oh. Jeremy, as he said, has, has devoted, you know, decades to the Labour Party. Does that, does that <laughs> earn him no loyalty? From I'm afraid, as I said, he only has himself to blame for once again repeating that the issue of anti-Semitism, <laughs> he says, was exaggerated. <laughs> How is this a serious political party? How are these people are going to potentially becoming a party of government? We've been joking around, we've been talking about Boris Johnson and Rishi Sunak and Richard Tice and everybody. We forgot that these people can actually still technically win. I know a lot of a lot of us still can't believe it. We say, well, it's no, we just can't see it happening. They, they cannot. We can't have Keir Starmer as a prime minister. But never say never. Random stuff has happened before. Um, but it, it's still no guarantee that Keir Starmer will definitely get a majority in the Commons. But he could easily get a on Parliament 
with a coalition of the nutters uh, of the SMP and everyone else. So don't be complacent. Keep up the good fight and try not to be tribal when it comes to political parties because there's no point. We have to fight the battle of ideas first and then the electoral system is there as a platform to stop the crazies. Anyway, let me know what you think. I'm Maya TC and we are the media.